Hello everyone, today we will talk about 5 hacks that can be found in Enscape interior rendering that will definitely elevate the quality of your output. Make sure to watch the video all the way through the end to get some of the most helpful tips. Using the Enscape assets is really a hack in itself and it's one of the reasons why Enscape has an upper hand compared to other rendering software. Even though sometimes some of the furniture assets do not fit the style of the interior that you're going for, I myself always find it easy to choose some accessories in the Enscape asset library that enhance the scenes that I am working on. For example, in this scene right here, I am using a combination of Enscape furniture, lighting and accessories. All of these assets that are being used here are new and just developed by the Enscape team. A few of the benefits that you get by using the Enscape asset library is that it takes less space on your modeling file, the assets are actually very high quality and modeled in detail, and they're ready to use with materials applied. The Enscape asset library has categorized all of the models very well, and they're easy to find even with typing a few keywords that characterize them. Also, once I find out that I'm using some of the assets more often than the others, I make sure that I put them in the favorite section to find them easier. All of the assets used in this scene are new and developed by the Enscape team. By following the link in the description and registering for your free 14-day trial, you'll receive an exclusive interior design package that includes these assets, new materials, the sample project of this interior scene for you to practice, and an interior design guide. If you want to use the assets that I'm using in this scene, make sure to check out the description for the promo link that will secure you for your exclusive interior design package once you start your free trial. Before we get started with any of the technicalities like lighting or materials, it is very important that we set up our camera angles correctly. For this scene, there are a few shots that I think are crucial to catch the important parts of the design. For each view that we set up, I'd advise to create a preset. This is because each camera angle will require its own field of view and settings, that way it is much easier to navigate through views without having to go back and forth with the visual settings tab. We can link the presets to the view, so when we click the view, the preset is automatically changed as well. For the renders, in this project I will keep a variety of ratios, some of the renders will be used for social media and the others for presentations. The ones that would be used for social media will have a more vertical aspect ratio to catch more attention when scrolling through the phone, and the ones that will be used for presentations will be using a horizontal aspect ratio. Now that I think we have set up the composition the way I wanted it to, and also tweaked up some of the settings for the renders that I want to create, I think we can move on to the next Enscape hack. Sometimes, even though there is not a light source located in an area in reality, adding, as I like to call it, fake lighting can improve your scene a lot. A few of the ways that I like to use this is with line lighting and with spotlights. The line lights will emulate studio lighting and the spotlights will replace the sun. Before we place the lights, it is good to locate what areas need lighting the most. The way we can do that is by selecting light mode in the visual settings or turning down the saturation all the way to 0%. I will create the filler lighting by putting in the line lights vertically, leaving some space between them after I've multiplied 5 or 6 of them. Now that the lights are created, we can copy them to the spots that we need to be brightened up. After we have done this, we will make sure that the sun intensity is at 0% since we will now be replacing it fully with spotlights. We will make sure that the spotlights have the widest angle possible, that way the shadows that they create are really soft. While using this technique, it is very important to put the light sources in the correct location and choosing the right amount of intensity because while using this technique, you can either make or break your images. Before we move on to the next Enscape hacks, I want to remind you to subscribe to the channel and like the video, that way I know that you'd want to watch more of these types of videos. One thing that a lot of people underestimate in interior renders is HDRIs. This is mainly because HDRIs are thought of as an exterior asset, but the truth is that a lot of the interior materials reflect the colors and lighting of the HDRIs. 
To showcase this to you, I'm going to try three different HDRIs and I'm going to put them as three different settings preset. That way I can change between them in only one click. As you can see, the difference that it has on the overall lighting and coloring of the image is pretty drastic. The other good thing about using HDRIs in interior scenes is that you don't have to use the make the brightest point as sun direction option. That way you can keep the image in its own direction and it just seems more suitable from your scene in openings like the windows and at the same time you can move the sun just how you would do it without an HDRI in whatever position you feel like. Just like with the Enscape Asset Library, the Material Library is very useful and easy to use. The Material Library has a good variety of textures you can use and is updating every day and improving the versatility that it provides. When I was just starting out in Enscape, I had to import every single material into SketchUp to be able to see it in the Enscape window. And even then I still had to add in the bump displacement maps manually. I still find myself using some of the materials externally, but it is good that some basic ones are easily accessible in the Enscape library. When you apply material from the Enscape material library, you already have the bump maps and reflections set up. But these settings don't always match what you're going for in your scene, and if this is the case for you, we can easily fix that by opening up the material editor and tweaking the intensity of the depth or taking all the maps off altogether. When applying materials, one other thing that can add an extra layer of realism is using surface imperfections. To showcase surface imperfections better, I will add an imperfection map in the reflection section of the material editor right here. What this does is that it makes the materials more the way that you would find them in real life, with fingerprints, scratches and such, and it's just another way to make your scene look much more closer to real life. Alright, so thank you very much for watching the video all the way to the end. And once again, don't forget to check the link in the description for the Enscape free trial. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video and check out my Patreon for more. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below in the comment section. See you in the next one.